Hey guys, welcome to your first official video lecture this year in biology. Please make sure you're filling in your notes organizer as you watch this video. So pause, stop, rewatch as many times as you need to to make sure you answer every question. So this is your first video lecture in biology. And biology is the natural science that studies life and living organisms. And today's theme is all going to be about what is a living organism? So biology is the scientific study of all aspects of living things. This shapes our understanding of the world from human health to biotechnology to preserving the environment and honestly everything in between. You're going to hear several themes throughout the year that keep getting brought up over and over and over. These are called unifying themes. In the study of biology, there are several unifying concepts or themes that come up time after time, even in topics that might seem un unrelated. So even though our unit that we're studying might be cells one week, and then the next unit, it might be ecology, you're still gonna hear certain phrases over and over again. Those are unifying themes. The unifying themes of biology are that all organisms share certain characteristics, and that's going to be the unifying theme we really focus on today. You're going to hear that all levels of life has to have systems of related parts. You're going to hear me say a million times this year that structure and function are related to each other in biology. Structure determines function. You're going to hear me say over and over again that organisms have to maintain homeostasis in order to survive. And finally, we're going to talk about evolution all year long, not just during our final unit, which is our evolution unit, because evolution explains the unity and diversity of life. So our question today is what is life? And this is not a philosophical question. What is the meaning of life? This is a scientific question. What does it mean to be alive? And so we're going to look at the scientific answer of what is life. So our first unifying theme is that all organisms share certain characteristic. And you're going to hear me say the word organism many times today. So it's important for you to understand that an organism is any individual living things. You'll sometimes hear these called biotic factors. So organisms range from single cell bacteria to weird single celled amoebas to algae to fungi to plants and then to animals. So today we are looking at the characteristics which define something as being alive. In order to consider something alive, they have to have these characteristics. All organisms are made up of one or more cells. All organisms display organization. All organisms require energy. All organisms respond to stimuli. All organisms are capable of reproduction. All organisms grow and develop. All organisms maintain homeostasis. And finally, all organisms, and I'm gonna kind of clarify that and say really populations evolve. We're gonna break down each of these characteristics of life and talk a little bit about each one of them. So let's start with our most basic characteristic of life, which is all organisms are made up of one or more cells. You should know what a cell is from your study of life science in elementary and middle school. A cell is the basic unit or building block of life. If an organism is made up of just one single cell, we would consider that a unicellular organism. If an organism is made up of many cells, then we call it a multicellular organism. So you can see some pictures here of some unicellular organisms like these two right here and some multicellular organisms. All of these cells come together to make up the organism. So just continuing on differences between unicellular and multicellular. Unicellular organisms are actually the most common life forms on Earth. And that one single cell that they are made of carries out all of the functions necessary for life. Multicellular organisms, however, have many different types of cells and they all have different functions. All of the cells, whether the organism is unicellular or multicellular, every cell contains genetic information. Uh, that's typically DNA, but sometimes could be RNA, which carry the instructions for life. Even in multicellular organisms, every single cell has the same set of instructions. They all have the same DNA, but they're different types of cells because of what genes in those DNA are, are being expressed or turned on and which ones aren't. Okay, our next characteristic of life is that all organisms display organization. So an organism is a system that is made up of working parts. That's a unifying theme in biology. So each organized structure in an organism has a specific function. Every structure in a single celled bacteria has a specific function. Every cell, every tissue within a multicellular organism has a specific function. 
So we're gonna work our way up from the smallest makeup of an organism all the way up to the individual organism itself. So the smallest level would be the atomic makeup of an organism. So we start with atoms. Atoms come together, bond together to form molecules. Then you make up, you have a bunch of different molecules that come together to make up organelles, which are those small structures inside of cells. So organelles come together in order to make a functioning cell. Similar cells come together to make up a tissue. So for example, you have muscle cells that come together to form a muscle tissue. Then you have similar tissues that are working together to make up an organ. So lots of muscular uh, tissue to make up the bicep muscle, which is your organ, for example. Then you have these, the organs functioning together to make up an organ system. So in this case, our muscular system. And then all of your organ systems in a multicellular organism come together to make up the individual organism. So even a plant has, which is a multicellular organism, has organs and organ systems to make up the entire organism. So our next characteristic of life is that all organisms need a source of energy to carry out life processes. That's absorption, reproduction, growth, movement, breathing, transport, and more. Those all require energy. Energy is the driving force that is needed for what we call metabolism. And metabolism is defined as just all of the chemical processes that are taking place inside of an organism. The chemical processes that are building up materials, the chemical processes that are breaking down materials, all of those processes together make up an organism's metabolism. So the question is, where does that energy come from? If I asked you where your energy came from, you would probably tell me that your energy comes from your food. But organisms get their food in slightly different ways. So all living things need chemical energy, and chemical energy is the energy in your food, the energy stored in the bonds of chemical compounds. We get our chemical energy from our food. But now my question to you is where does the energy in your food come from? Ultimately, the energy in your food comes from the sun. Let's see why that is. You've probably heard of these terms before, autotrophs and heterotrophs. Let's start with heterotrophs. So heterotrophs or heterotrophic organisms are organisms that have to consume other organisms as their source of food as to, in order to obtain energy. Um, consumers like herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores are examples of heterotrophs. Then there's a unique type of heterotrophs called decomposers. Decomposers break down dead and decaying organisms in order to absorb their nutrients, but still they're consuming other organisms in order to obtain their energy from their food. Those are heterotrophic organisms. Autotrophic organisms are organisms that don't have to consume other organisms for their food. They are capable of producing their own food. Okay, so that word part troph means food. So they produce their food sort of automatically, autotrophs. So the autotrophic organisms that you're probably most familiar with and the ones we'll talk about the most are the photoautotrophs. These are autotrophic organisms that photosynthesize. They convert solar energy into chemical energy. So they make their own food through the process of photosynthesis. Chemoautotrophs are autotrophic organisms that make their own food using the energy that's found in, in chemical compounds. Uh, some a example of a chemosynthesis, chemosynthetic organism are like the weird little microorganisms that are down in the sulfur vents at the bottom of the ocean. Okay, our next characteristic of life is that all organisms respond to stimuli. Organisms have to be able to react and respond to their environment in order to survive because environments change. So light, temperature, touch are just a few examples of physical factors that organisms have to be able to respond to. The stimulus is whatever thing is causing the change or reaction in an organism. And then the response is the reaction to that internal or external stimuli. So look at our picture here. We've got a plant growing towards, it was growing towards a window in the original picture. So the stimulus is the light, right? And the response is the growth in that direction. That's a good thing for the plant to be able to do. It's gonna help it survive by getting the light it needs for photosynthesis. Look at these pictures here. These are all examples of organisms responding to their changing environment. See if what if see if you can identify the stimulus and the response in each of these scenarios and put one down on your paper. So you may need to pause on this picture. 
The next characteristic of life is that all organisms are capable of reproduction. We've got to ensure the survival of the species, right? So in order for the spe species to survive, organisms have to be able to reproduce or produce the next generation of individuals. And technically, the definition of reproduction is the passing of genetic material from parent to offspring. There are different ways that organisms can reproduce. Organisms can reproduce asexually or sexually. Asexual reproduction is when you have a single parent producing offspring. And because that one parent is being used to produce offspring, the offspring are genetically identical to the parent. Here's some examples of asexual reproduction over here. Sexual reproduction is when you have the combination of genetic material because you have two parents being used to produce offspring. So their genetic material combines in order to produce offspring that are genetically different. Obviously, uh, humans are an example of organisms that reproduce sexually. Now, you may want to pause on this and look at some comparisons here of asexual and sexual reproduction. We've got some advantages and disadvantages of each, and then a good Venn diagram comparing and contrasting the two. So pause on this slide to get whatever information you need for your paper. Our next characteristic of life is that all organisms grow and develop, and those two terms mean different things. Growth is simply an increase in mass or getting bigger, going from smaller to bigger, that's growth. Development is a change in abilities. So looking at our life cycle of a frog, something we've learned about since we were in kindergarten, can you identify both growth and development here in this picture? We've got an increase in mass over time, and we've also got a change in abilities. The instructions, again, for the growth and development of organisms from bacteria all the way to people are again carried by genetic information, DNA, RNA. And it's that process of development that allows organisms to be able to mature and gain that ability to reproduce that we've already previously talked about. Our next characteristic of life, and one of the unifying themes that you're going to hear over and over again this year in biology, is that all organisms maintain homeostasis. And homeostasis can be kind of a tricky concept. Homeostasis is the regulation of an organism's internal conditioning, conditions, maintaining a stable internal environment. That's removing waste, that's transporting materials, that's maintaining temperature, thermoregulation. All of those are examples of ways organisms maintain homeostasis. And maintaining homeostasis is kind of like a, a seesaw where you are constantly bal balancing within a very limited range. And that is because cells function best within a limited range of conditions. Temperature, blood sugar, acidity, and all of these other conditions have to be controlled so cells can function at their prime. Breakdowns in homeostasis are not good and often life-threatening to organisms, whether the organism is unicellular or multicellular. And then homeostasis is maintained through natural feedback mechanisms, things that just happen naturally in the organism, but also in organism behaviors, right? If your body temperature goes up, there are certain natural things that start happening to regulate your body temperature. But if you touch a hot pan, for example, you behave in a way that maintains homeostasis by removing your hand. So here are some examples of organisms maintaining homeostasis. So again, pause on this slide if you need to and see if you can identify how each of these are organisms maintaining homeostasis and choose one to write about on your paper. And then our final characteristic of life is that all organisms, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna clarify that and say actually it's the populations, evolve, right? A single organism doesn't evolve, it's the, the whole species or the whole population that evolves. Uh, a term you've probably heard before is adaptation. Adaptations are any inherited characteristics that benefit an organism in its environment. Adaptations help organisms survive. So you can see this cheetah here with various adaptations that help it survive within its environment. That's all a result of natural selection through evolution, and this happens in all populations. A strong species is going to be one that has genetic variation because they can withstand a changing environment through the process of natural selection. If they're all genetically the same, they're all susceptible to the same things. So those are our characteristics of life, the things that identify life, what makes a living organism. Go back and rewatch anything you need in order to make sure that you answered all your questions. And then we're gonna end on a little joke. Why did the bacteria cross the microscope? To get to the other slide. Hope you're having a great day.